here I want to present you some more insight in with regard to the first uh, policy measure, how we proceeded, what are the results of the study, and how we might might proceed further on. Um, it has turned out to be a shift from uh, aviation to high-speed trains, but we have al also delved into other possibilities. Nevertheless, in the end, it came out that uh, high-speed train is the most um, relevant alternative for um, aviation on short and mid-range distances. We also looked at first at um, distances up to 700 kilometers, but um, in the end decided as a first step to go for aviation up to uh, 500 kilometers. So, of course, it is an, uh, this part of, um, of uh, the Green Deal, um, uh, the, the part of the European Green Deal fr from uh, Frans Timmermans and the uh, European Commission. Um, is also focusing on sustainable transport. And some issues uh, have been uh, delivered, some targets have been delivered about uh, the doubling of the high-speed train network um, and frequencies, and also on um, avoiding um, uh, avoidable aviation um, traffic um, uh, within Europe. So we see this as possibly a first step uh, for uh, the Euro Delta. Uh, and if it might work here, then it could be uh, rolled out perhaps uh, over whole of Europe. But let's start here first. We have looked uh, that uh, according to a methodological framework, uh, which is called the um, triple market arena model, uh, where we distinguished between a travel market, um, where some actors are um, uh, in that arena, uh, also with regard to a transport mar market, uh, who is transporting them, and those are mostly different um, institutions and different actors who, is, uh, uh, who are uh, over there in that arena, and a traffic market, who has to facilitate uh, those um, um, those uh, travel and transport? Uh, at first, we also looked at not only um, uh, aviation passengers, but also on uh, freight, aviation uh, uh, aviation freight. But it came out that uh, on, under those um, within those ranges of 500 kilometers, there's not so much. Uh, Freight traveled, and that is mo mostly trucked. So, in the end, we have decided not to go into that very deep, uh, into the deep, but mostly focuses on uh, focus ourselves on transport of uh, people. Um, we have delved into all the main, um, all the airports in the Euro Delta. There's somewhat of 2022 20, airports in this Euro Delta, but actually, in the end, only four uh, serves uh, travel up to 700 and 500 kilometers. And that is Amsterdam, uh, that is Brussels, that is Dusseldorf, and that is Cologne Bonn, uh, CGN. You see them here uh, within the Euro Delta. And filled in, you see what their main destinations are up to uh, five to seven hundred kilometer travel. Uh, so you see that uh, from Amsterdam, there's lots of travel travel to Manchester, Birmingham, Leeds, and London, but also to Paris, uh, Frankfurt, and from Dusseldorf to Berlin, uh, Munich, also from Cologne to Munich and Zurich, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, when you want to see the numbers, you can delve into the, to the study, but I will give uh, some uh, of that. But we, of course, we looked, would, would there be an alternative for that uh, aviation travel? And here we have made some assumptions um, over here. We have not only looked at the travel time, uh, for instance, with regard to um, air travel 
and high-speed train travel. So as said before, we have looked at other alternatives, but in the end, with regard to travel time, only the high-speed train is an alternative for that um, for those aviation uh, ranges. And for that, we have also, of course, looked at the pre and after uh, time you need uh, to go to an, to, an, uh, to an airport and then go fly to another airport and you have to travel in, into the city. So we have looked mostly to the travel time from inner city to inner city. And that uh, the changes, of course, for a high-speed train, because um, uh, high-speed train stations are nearer to inner, inner cities. Uh, High-speed train travel within Europe doesn't need an in and out check time. Um, for the UK, it, it uh, does so, but we have taken these assumptions. Um, and uh, according also to uh, earlier study of uh, the Dutch um, Knowledge Center, we have taken these assumptions uh, with regard to travel time. Um, moreover, uh, as an assumption, we have looked to uh, travel numbers um, uh, from uh, the, the year 2019, because uh, due to COVID, 2020 and 2021 weren't re representatives, uh, representative uh, according to our um, estimations. So we have looked mostly uh, with regard to the data of 2019. Um, here you see the, the air passengers in and outbound uh, to and from Amsterdam, less than 700 kilometers. And you already see that there are lots of passengers flying from Amsterdam to London. Um, the difference, uh, that is the last column, you see the last uh, in travel time, um, it will take by aviation some uh, 13 minutes faster but uh, then to travel with Eurostar, but uh, we thought that would be in a range uh, within one hour and we have taken still this um, into account. Uh, but also here you see there are still lots of people traveling in, uh, uh, traveling in and out from Amsterdam, Schiphol uh, to Paris, uh, to Manchester, uh, Frankfurt, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so you see here the distance in air kilometers, the distance in ground kilometers, the travel time by air and the travel by travel time by e e Eurostar of Thales or ETA during um, uh, during that um, the travel. The same we have done for Düsseldorf. Here you see the major destination origin and destination points from Düsseldorf, uh, mostly in Germany, uh, to Munich, uh, Berlin, Hamburg, but also uh, outwards of, of, of Germany, Zurich and Paris, and also Amsterdam are in range um, uh, within those 700 kilometers. So it is uh, the distance in air from Amsterdam, for instance, 177 kilometers, on the ground 219, and uh, you are with high-speed train faster in Amsterdam than flying by a plane, according to uh, our assumptions. Um, but nevertheless, there are still some 250,000 people who have flew from uh, Frankfurt, then from Dusseldorf to Amsterdam um, um, uh, during 2019. Um, these are the numbers from Cologne Bonn. Um, there's much less travel uh, towards other areas in the Euro Delta, but at least in Germany and uh, towards Zurich. And with the same, the, here, these are the numbers uh, from for Brussels uh, in and outbound, outbound in, during that time. So as I said before, uh, we have uh, skipped all those uh, destination areas which um, weren't within uh, within the time. You could say um, that we have only looked at those uh, numbers who are more or less comparable, where the, the high-speed train travel is more or less comparable with regard to uh, aviation travel, 
and that meant that we have selected some city, city pairs as a first phase up to 500 kilometers uh, with their respective uh, travel numbers, uh, travel amounts in 2000, tax numbers in 2019, where we have all, also distinguished in origin and destination travelers and transport travelers. Uh, but that is a difficult matter to explain. Some uh, Brussels uh, keeps here some di different kind of ideas with regard to transfer. Uh, that's not only going from transfer from Brussels to Amsterdam, for instance, and then flying through to New York, but also the other way around. But these are more or less the numbers we got from the from the uh, airports themselves. So we have further worked only with, with these numbers and these city pairs. Um, and then looked at uh, what could be the, the capacity of the high-speed trains uh, on those, um, on those uh, connections. And of course, uh, here we've got the three existing ones, Thales, ITSE and Eurostar, um, with their capacity in high-speed trains. We have also looked uh, at alternatives because uh, we looked at the numbers and the, 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 the capacity is more than the, than the numbers uh, traveled by these uh, trains. So uh, some 70%, 75% of these trains are on average full. So there could be more. You could also work with double deckers, uh, which are already done um, at some tracks, um, uh, you could also work with longer trains. Uh, for instance, the Thales is much shorter than, for instance, the, 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 the Eurostar train. Uh, but nevertheless, for the moment, we have worked more or less with these capacities and try to, uh, to look at what uh, would it mean when we, when we won't uh, travel uh, more by plane to, to these uh, city paths, but try to um, uh, to shift that all to uh, high speed trains. And there we came up with um, with uh, th those um, ideas. We have looked at all the corridors, and uh, for instance, with regard to each each a on the on the on the corridor from Amsterdam through Cologne to Frankfurt and then to Basel, um, you've got these extra numbers on each of those, um, on those um, um, stops of the high-speed train, you, could, you might say. And you already see that if we move all the air travelers from Amsterdam on that corridor towards the high-speed train, it will almost double the frequency um, uh, of the existing train. Um, and for uh, Mannheim and Stuttgart, Munich, it will um, get eight more trains from Berlin to Leipzig, uh, 18 more, etc., etc. We also did that for um, uh, the Thalys, um, who's traveling more or less from Amsterdam to Brussels and then to Paris um, and then or um, uh, uh, and then further on. Um, or the Thalys who's traveling from Dortmund to Paris. And we have also looked for the Eurostar traveling to London and from Paris to London. Um, but Paris wasn't in our research, so um, don't see that here. The frequency is um, very much uplifted. And then you see here that this is more or less the frequency in a scheme um, at the moment, uh, more or less at the moment in 2019. Uh, so there's two per day um, uh, Eurostars traveling from Amsterdam to London uh, with regard to the Thales is more or less every hour from uh, seven o'clock, six o'clock to uh, more or less uh, six o'clock in the evening, uh, departing uh, seven o'clock in the evening. The same is for the Eurostar in, um, in green at the moment here and here in blue is the ITE. Um, and when we would shift um, um, uh, 
all the aviation passengers to watch the high speed train, um, it would could in the end mean something like this. And here you see already that there would be on the corridor of Amsterdam to Brussels every half hour um, a train. Also, the, 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 the day shift is expanded towards five o'clock in the morning, the first train, and 10 o'clock in the evening, the last train. Um, the same goes for the ITE and also the same for the Eurostar. Uh, there would be every hour in Euro uh, uh, train from Lille to uh, London, for instance, and on the corridor between Lille and Brussels, every 20, 20 minutes would there, then there will be a Eurostar or police making it possible for people to travel from Lille to Brussels. Um, from Brussels to Cologne, it would be every 45 minutes and more. Uh, the, 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 the busiest uh, corridor in the, this respect would be the one between Osnabrück and Cologne, where every 10 minutes at that moment would be a high speed train, um, Thalys or, um, or uh, ITE, uh, and then over the rest of, um, of Germany. We didn't look at the, at the, the, the net capacity um in uh, further away from from germany or further away from for for france but that could have a major effect there as well okay and then we discussed with uh the partners with regard to the traffic market who has to um deliver um these things these massive uh, intensity of frequencies of the high speed trains could 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 we handle that on the existing tracks um and then we discussed that as well with prorail the the, the dutch uh, infra provider as well as db netze uh, the german infra provider and with infrabel and tuckrail and they said Probably we can do, but um, we would need um, a, a specific points um, uplifted measures. And then we discuss with them what is roughly the, the, the um, investment uh, needed for that. Um, and there we came up with this list. Uh, there should be an, a new tunnel uh, in, um, in, in the Schiphol area. Here is, it says that it's already planned for, but uh, I'm not sure it is already there. Uh, but if necessary, we could add here also 500 million euros. Uh, we would need perhaps uh, thinking about uh, the baggage handling from rail to plane, um, so that perhaps people can already um, uh, get on. Uh, with an inch check in uh, at home um, over internet, but nevertheless their their baggage should be still be there and should be handled handled over to the to the planes. So perhaps you have a new baggage system for that. And you have to optimize operations then uh, on the short term of the north south axis in Brussels, which uh, would need some money. Um, Perhaps there would be need a need for a new high speed train track between Eindhoven and uh, and uh, Duisburg. Um, perhaps we have to upgrade the track uh, between Arnhem and Oberhausen, although the Debenetz said that was already planned for. But mainly from the period 230 and 240, we need extra investments uh, in upgrading the stations, upgrading Brussels Midi upgrading um, uh, Köln Deutsch uh, station, which is already uh, planned for, um, uh, upgrade the, the safety systems. And from 2040, perhaps from there, we would need a new north-south tunnel in Brussels, an extension of the Euro tunnel um, between England and uh, France, upgrade Euroleal and new high-speed train track. So in total, it would mean something about 30 billion, 30 to 35 billion uh, uh, euros. Uh, and that would mean something about 1 billion in uh, extra investment every year. Um, 
but what would be the impact on the environmental side? Um, we see it, we see over here that it would have a major effect on um, CO2 emissions. Uh, something about 200 billion tons of CO2 would uh, uh, would be the case in uh, in those airports. The same will go for the energy use, and it could also have a major impact. Uh, sorry, it doesn't it, yeah here a major impact. Sorry, a major impact on the noise reduction. Um, a little bit less in Amsterdam than in Dusseldorf and Cologne. Um, and that is due to the fact that in Amsterdam, it is already four years ago decided upon that they will fly with bigger planes. Uh, so the reduction, the, the, the shift wouldn't have so much impact on um, uh, plane travel. Uh, but that is more the case in Dusseldorf and Cologne. So there the impact on the noise reduction is also um, expected to be bigger. Um, the impact on the socio-economic sphere, uh, travel times remain more or less the, the same within, uh, within the Euro Delta. There would be a doubling to even quadrupling of the high-speed train frequencies on various corridors. Uh, there would be extensions of the high-speed train edge connections towards 5 a.m. and 10 p.m. An upgrade of, uh, of the economy around the station is then expected, possibly also uh, with a reduction of the ticket price because you have an... Uh, mass economy um, effect over here within the high-speed train. And there would be a better use of the existing high-speed train tracks, which are already there, for instance, between Haarlem Amir and Rotterdam or between Rotterdam and Antwerp. And uh, possibly there is a further model shift to from car to rail on international connections and for possibly further spin-off on the economic added value, improved international jobs, accessibility, additional transport oriented development, and possibly a further boost on pre and after transport. Um, it could also help uh, to get an integrating mobility as a service system. So we looked at the policy roadmap uh, already presented um, by uh, Stephanie. Um, here I will discuss uh, more in detail what uh, what we could do if we want to make this happen. Um, further, we should discuss, of course, the results of this analysis, analysis with the overall DGs of the European Committee. Um, um, you could see this uh, per learning event as the first uh, idea to that uh, to that effect. Um, as mentioned by Stephanie, appoint an ambassador or an ambassador team to further coordinate the activities because it is a um, major job, as, as said by Stephanie. It is multi-level and it is cross-border. Um, and who has could be responsible for that. Um, from there, if you want to do this, you um, have possibly to, uh, to adapt the Open Skies Agreement um, um, and to, to say, okay, we don't allow any aviation anymore uh, up to 500 kilometers. And in the second step, probably uh, towards 700 uh, kilometers that would need some uh, and some uh, ideas with the, the national slot, slot coordinators. Um, uh, parallel to this, discuss with the four involved airport operators, but possibly they could come in also earlier, as uh, Leon Verhalle is now also already um, reflecting on this research. Um, how to implement the shift and how to deal with baggage handling and all, um, all those if affairs. Um, parallel to that, to discuss with the national rail infra providers, we have already started this up with InfraBell and with ProRail and DBNets, as mentioned before. 
to implement the measure um, measures um, also in coordination with uh, DG Move. Um, we will talk about that later. Uh, then we have, of course, uh, the need to discuss these ideas with the airlines and other um, e e directorates of the of the European Union, and then um, uh, hopefully have a first phase ready around 2030 um, with uh, a layout towards uh, 2050. Okay, that was my presentation so far. <laughs>